All right, so the last two slides are just a bunch of real quick to understand the language, most common symbols. Like I said, write these down um, and you'll have a recording so you can go back and pause it and, and write them down in your dream journal, but write them down the back in the glossary so you'll have your own. So real quick, most common symbols, house, home. Like I said, places are a state of mind. Well, the home is the form and the function of the home is it's your everyday place of existence. It's where you feel most comfortable, safe, secure. You know, so it's going to be a safe, secure state of mind, you know, your everyday regular state of mind. You know, the first floor is going to represent the conscious mind, second floor, subconscious mind, third floor, superconscious mind. So let's go back to here. You have the first floor, conscious mind, second floor, the next division, because these are three divisions by these separated by these solid lines. First floor, second floor, third floor. So if you're having a dream on the first floor, it's something about the physical conscious mind. Second floor is about subconscious, third floor, or the attic is about the superconscious mind. You'll almost, all, you'll almost never have a dream of a house that has more than three stories. Um, anything that has more than three stories is usually like some kind of building or something, a factory or super, you know, uh, uh, paper or something, almost always. And then the basement represents unconscious. You know, it's, it's, it's sub-level. It's underneath the surface. So it's uh, unconscious. The roof will also represent superconscious mind. You know, what separates you from the sky? The sky represents superconscious mind. So the roof will represent the separation between the, the uh, super, superconscious mind. So, oops. This right line right here will separate the roof because, like, like, just to reiterate from last week, this line goes outside of the triangle to delineate the fact that the superconscious mind is whole amongst itself. The subconscious and conscious minds are two halves of one whole. This is the receptive. This is the aggressive. This is the feminine. This is the masculine. So we talked about people earlier. Males in dreams are going to represent conscious mind because males are aggressive naturally aggressive, you know, naturally, uh, you know, giving. So the conscious mind is always up more, it's more aggressive. Those thoughts are just coming into your mind. And the subconscious mind is more receptive. You know, women are naturally more receptive. You know, they can be aggressive. You know, guys can be receptive, but naturally they're more uh, receptive. So they're going to be represent the subconscious mind, aspects of the subconscious mind. So a hospital, a place, and what kind of place? It's he about healing, so a healing state of mind. School, the learning state of mind. Work, a productive state of mind. You know, we actually talked about a lot of these already. Church, a spiritual state of mind. You know, prison, walls, and fences. Those are all going to represent limitations. You know, fences are somewhat limiting. You know, you can jump over a fence, go through a fence with the door. Um, you can knock a fence over. Um, so these aren't kind of weaker limitations, personal limitations. So a personal limitation, let me start there first, is some sort of belief that you have that is limiting your possibilities because you know, through the universal law of infinity, anything is possible. So if, if a belief is just a thought that you continue to think. So if you have a strong belief, something that you believe that's not universally true, then it's a personal limitation. It's not universal, it's personal. So like a lot of people believe that you have to work hard in order to make a lot of money. That's not true. I know plenty of people who have just received a lot of money, you know, <laughs> they just inherited it or won the lottery or, you know, came across it somehow. Um, they didn't work hard. And, you know, I've, I've had coworkers who didn't work at all <laughs> and got the same amount of money as me. So that was a, that, that is a personal limitation. It's a belief that is true for you because of how much you believe it, but not necessarily for other people. So sometimes we have it, it limits us. That belief limits the space that we can, you know, encompass how how far our mind can expand. You know, if I started like walls is the next strongest, you know, because walls, you can have doors and windows to get through them, but you can't really knock them down as strong as fences. You can't jump over a wall. I mean, if it's, you know, if it's a wall that doesn't have a roof. Yeah. But anyways, you know, walls are stronger than fences. And so it's going to be a stronger limitation, you know, and so it'll take more effort to break through those. Like, like the room that you're in right now, if you just started expanding until you filled up the room, you wouldn't really be able to expand anymore 
until you broke through that wall and broke down broke that all that down then you can expand further so your consciousness is the same way these these personal limitations place limits on how far you can expand and grow and eventually after you know expanding so far you know as if you're anyone who's done any kind of you know personal development or spiritual development or soul growth of any kind you know that you come sometimes through your growth you come across points in life where shit just gets rough you're coming that's when you're you've expanded as far as you can without having to now you have to break down these personal limitations these personal beliefs in order to grow even any further than this so some people do do the work that it takes to overcome those heavier obstacles to you know break through and start to grow further and some people kind of dissipate some people do both at different times you know i've had plenty of times in these last 12 years where i've done both <laughs> and then prison is it even stronger you know that's you know walls i can i can walk through this wall right now you know they're using this door or this doorway you know if i'm in a prison and i'm stuck in prison sense i can't i can't walk out of there those are a lot stronger personal limitations you know the prison is like life sentence you know years you know so these are very strong beliefs you know that that i need more money that i used to have that was very true for me but it wasn't true for everybody it wasn't universal not everybody needed more money you know jeff bezos he don't need more money you know, he, yeah, he's after trying to get more money, but you don't need it. You know, me at those times in my life, I needed more money. You know, no matter what happened in my life, it was just to reaffirm that I needed more money. And that was a life sentence. That was a prison. You know, when I broke through that, I was like breaking out of prison. Actually, I think I, I, I can recall the actual dream that I had around that time. Well, actually, I had a couple, but there's one very significant one of breaking out of prison. I didn't just break myself out of prison, but other people is like, I could probably even go to the exact journal that it's in go to the page but anyways um that's another value of dream writing down your dreams is you have documentation and study you can see the personal growth you can see how it developed you can re go back to those dreams and, and reread them and reinterpret them but anyways that's what prisons will be it's supposed to be more of like a fast-paced thing but oh well <laughs> as long as you're learning and growing all the benefit it's all that matters so um, the last one here, apartments, dorms, and mall, is going to represent universal mind. So I'm going to have to take a minute on this to kind of break that down as well. So these are all places, right? So states of mind. Well, uh, for, first of all, <laughs> it's these are all things that have like individual, lots of individual units that come together. Like a mall has lots of lots of individual stores that all make up and encompass that one body of a building mall you know dorms and apartments have all these different units that like living quarters that unite together within and form this one building like actually um uh i just shared earlier mint the suffix mint means mind so apartment each part of the mind you know it's a part of the mind so universal mind these the different parts that make up the universal mind you know enlightenment light is awareness like we talked about so enlightenment is more light in your mind you know government you can, you can go from there ailment anyways um universal mind in is is what it'll represent and what the universal mind is is how we are all connected like if you're in an apartment building you're connected to the person on the other side of the wall you know you're connected to the person below you you're connected to the person above you you're connected to the person on the other wall you're connected to the person across the hall you know, and so just like earlier, we were talking about, you know, the, the deeper in mind you go, the more you're able to realize that connection that you have with other people are that that is happening through universal mind. You know, so when you when we talked about earlier, you know, when you think about somebody and you look down, and they've already texted you or they're calling, you know, or, you know, you're thinking of a song in your head and the person next to you starts singing it. You know, that is an occurrence happening through universal mind. So in those moments. You were in a state of mind of being connected and, and consciously open to the universal mind, how we are all connected through the mind. So that's what that's what is meant by universal mind. 